Okay, hello everyone. So my topic this afternoon is dealing with stress. Um, and what I'd like to look at is how we can use Buddhist meditation in particular to help us really recognize what stress is and how we can let go and reduce the amount of stress we have in our lives. Actually, finally opening up the prospect of being able to let go of stress completely. Um, so I think within our culture, then this is, a, this is a big deal. This is a big topic, because I don't know if you've noticed, but everybody is stressed out. <laughs> everybody is stressed out. You know, the folks going off to work, the folks staying at home, the grandparents are stressed out, the kids are stressed out, everybody is stressed out. The parents are stressed out taking the kids to recreation. Everybody's stressed out. And we know, actually, within our society, we discuss this, that stress is a big problem, um, that it causes a lot of disease, uh, physical disease, back aches, headaches, chronic fatigue, um, depression, anxiety. All of these things are stress-related. Apparently, it's the biggest cause of you know, people staying at home from work, missing work, because of stress. And yet the word is actually fairly mysterious, stress. What is it? What does it indicate? We sort of know, it seems, because we talk about it a lot, but what does it actually indicate? What is it act what's, what's actually going on when we're experiencing stress, when we are stressed out? So at the moment, I think our understanding is that stress comes from the external situation. So we feel that there are certain situations that are stressful. At work, it's stressful. It's a stressful environment. My boss, not just situations, but people, right? My boss stresses me out. Um, my partner stresses me out. My kids stress me out. Whatever it is, we feel it's coming from the external situation. And in a sense, we have no choice but to get stressed out because it's a stressful situation. And that's what we say to folks, you know, I'm in a stressful situation. Everybody nods sympathetically. Aha, stressful situation, I see. Yeah, poor you. <laughs> no choice. As if, you know, you see your boss coming and he's like a stress inducer. He's like, he's like radiating stress vibes, you know, towards you. And you have no choice. You're just like being stressed just by seeing him. But clearly, if that were the case, if stress were being was, was being aroused from the external situation, then everybody who saw your boss would be responding in the same way. Everybody who was in that situation would be responding in the st same way. Everybody would be losing their heads, so to speak, simultaneously. And yet, clearly, that's not the case. You know, you can be with people who are responding very positively while you're responding by freaking out, becoming stressed out. So that in itself is a clear sign that it's not the situation itself that is producing stress, but rather your response to it. In other words, your mind is creating the stressful situation. Stress is created by your mind. So then we need to investigate further. What mind? What mind is creating stress? How is it you're responding to the situation so as to produce stress? So I think that, you know, using, relying on Geshe Kelsang's teachings, where we really look in depth at the nature of the mind, we can learn to examine the mind and explore uh, a stressful situation and determine which states of mind are creating what we call stress. So I think, um, at least as a, as a way of introduction, we might say that stress is the tension that arises between what we want to happen and what is happening. It's the tension that arises between what we want to happen and what is happening. I'll just give you a simple example, a Manhattan example, because that's where I live. Um, when you're running to catch the subway, you know, the train, and there you are, you want to catch it. You may even think you need to catch it <laughs> because you have to get to a certain destination. You arrive there almost in the nick of time and the door closes right in front of you. Um, 
it's an interesting experiment, actually. You can, you can sometimes just sit in the train and watch this happen at every station <laughs> to people. And you will see that there is seemingly a universal response as if this were a stressful situation from its own side because everybody goes universally, no. <laughs> like that, you know, no. <laughs> and then they immediately also respond by looking up towards the conductor with this hopeful look in their mind. <laughs> The conductor's looking in the other direction, <laughs> paying no attention. And then you can, you can see, that because you know from your own experience, that your mind immediately then starts basically uh, thinking not very pleasant thoughts about the conductor as if he was doing this purposefully to you. In fact, pl had probably planned the whole thing. You know, <laughs> waited till you just got there before he hit that close button and then went off snickering to himself. So you want something to happen, and then something else happens. And what do we do? We reject it, right? We reject what's happening, and we become unhappy. And we can get trapped in that state of unhappiness, can't we? I mean, you can actually sometimes spend the next five to 10 minutes being essentially bummed out about what just took place. Why? Because you're angry. Anger has just arisen in your mind. You are rejecting what took place. That's what anger does. It rejects what takes place. And then it fixates on that. It fixates on the problem and exaggerates the problem and you get caught up in this big fantasy and you can stay there for a long time feeling pain. And it's useless, isn't it? Much better if we re responded with a solution-oriented mind. We just said, aha, yes. <laughs> the train doors have closed. Yes, I accept. And therefore, what should I do? Should I wait and catch the next train? Should I run up and catch a taxi? Whatever. You, you respond with a solution-oriented mind if you're practicing patient acceptance. So let's look at a, a more kind of commonly stressful situation. There you are at work, and you are multitasking, because that's what we do. We all multitask. You're doing many things at one time. You're like a juggler, right? You're juggling. You're juggling your balls up in the air. Maybe you're feeling pretty good because you're on top of it, you know? You're doing good. You're like, you're like in the groove. You're in the zone. Uh, everything's going well. Your boss comes along, says, can you do this? No problem. You, you take another ball, keep, keep it all rolling, flowing. Another ball, no problem. Then your boss says, oh, by the way, can you just do this? And at this point now, it's getting a little bit edgy because now you reach the limit of what you feel to be your capacity. Um, and then they say, oh, actually, just this. And on your way out, can you also just do this? And then at a certain point, right, you feel like you're about to start dropping balls, and your mind goes, no. Same thing, no. Rejection, I don't accept. But, of course, it's your boss, so you say yes. <laughs> so externally you're saying yes, internally you're saying no, and what happens is your mind gets fixated on the no, right, because you're angry. You start weaving the self-same elaboration on the disappointment. And you're holding on to that, thinking, oh, my boss, they always, they always ask too much of me. They're so demanding. Don't they understand my situation? Blah, 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 blah. And of course, you're dropping balls now. As you're dropping balls, you're becoming more overwhelmed because things are getting out of control. Uh, you start worrying about you know, losing your job or this or that, whatever it is. But you get trapped in a negative cycle of mind, created by your mind of anger, created by your mind of rejection. Um, and it's just increasing stress, isn't it? It's increasing pain. It's increasing the tension in your mind. Things are spiraling downwards. Things are getting worse. And all the time you're blaming your boss or the situation or whatever it is, right? You can apply this, this uh, analogy to, uh, to any number of situations. So you're externalizing the source of the problem but in truth, the problem is your own mind of anger. Stress is a product of anger. I'm going to say that again, because I think it's really important. Stress is created by the mind of, of anger that's rejecting the situation. If we, well, if we can acknowledge that, then suddenly we are given an opportunity to transform the situation. If we don't acknowledge that, if we think the situation itself is producing stress, is forcing us to become overwhelmed, and the situ then of course the situation feels unmanageable. There's nothing we can do. We're trapped. We feel so trapped. But if we recognize it's our own mind of anger, then we're given a solution. 
So of course, this is the Buddhist approach. The Buddhist approach is to understand that it's our own mind that's creating our reality, um, and that an angry mind creates a painful reality. And in this case, the, the rejecting aspect of the mind of anger, the non-accepting -accept aspect of the mind of anger is creating a stressful situation. And it all feels so tight and unmanageable, doesn't it? We can get stuck there. People can spend years of their life going, yes, 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 but internally they're saying no. For example, the other day I saw a man out walking a little puppy bulldog. And this puppy bulldog had no intention of being walked. <laughs> so, so he was just dragging this thing <laughs> along the sidewalk, you know, like this. You could hear the kind of, you know, the nails scra scraping across the sidewalk. And that's us, isn't it? We go through life in so many situations with the brakes on. We're saying yes, yes, yes externally, but internally we're saying no. So if you try to drive, like you know when you try to drive with a handbrake on? I'm sure you've all done that. You're wondering, what's that noise and why am I not going so fast? You know. Well, it's because you have the brakes on. So it's the same, that's, and that creates stress, doesn't it? Stress on the engine. Well, that's us. Stress, stress on the engine, stress in our mind, stress in our body, stress in our relationships, because we're saying no, but we're not even recognizing that we're saying no. We're just griping internally, we're just complaining internally. So what we need to do is recognize, and this is what we do when we practice meditation, we get to know our own mind. We get to learn what does anger feel like, what does patience feel like, and this is where it all begins. This is where the practice begins. This is what the Buddhist practice is all about. Geshe Kelsang says again and again and again, the way to, to um, deal with the, the painful states of mind that we call the delusions, such as anger, is to recognize them, reduce them, and abandon them. And basically what I'm talking about here is we need to recognize our mind of anger. In other words, we need to recognize, I am angry, and this is what it looks like. This is what the mind of anger looks like. And sometimes we don't want to do that. We don't want to recognize that you're angry with, for example, your partner or your kids. It's, it's even painful to recognize that, isn't it? But it's vital, because if you don't, the situation remains unmanageable. The moment you recognize it, there's possibility, because you, you can only change the external situation so much but you can, you can completely and utterly transform your mind. So what do we need to do? We need to recognize our own mind of anger. Just that. Initially, just that. Actually accept, I'm angry. Accepting it in such a way so that you can actually look at it and say, here it is, a mind of anger and take a look at it and see how painful it is. See how actually you don't want to follow it. Listen to its grumblings and realize, I don't want to follow its grumblings. I don't want to get trapped in that. Just by looking at it, you create some distance. Some space comes in the mind, basically some leverage. Whereas before, you're just immersed in it, aren't you? Because you're not recognizing it. It's just take, take, it's taken full possession of you. Once you get a little bit of space, it's not easy to distance yourself from that mind through simple techniques. Breathing meditation, for example, you can just breathe it right out. You can just let it go. Many meditations we teach for learning how to let go of the distorted state of mind, the painful state of mind, but first you have to recognize it. Once we, we can create some space, we can begin to let go of that situation, then of course we have to bring in an opposing positive view. We have to see, because the situation is not inherently stressful, because, it's not, because my boss is not a stress inducer from his or her own side, I can respond to my boss in a different way. So the key thing here is learning how to, s we're learning to see some, some positive way of responding to what before seemed like an unmanageable situation. So for example, in, in uh, Geshe Kelsang's most recent book, How to Solve Our Human Problems, 
then he, we, we learn many, many different methods for how to uh, deal with anger, for example, and how to respond to difficult situations, problems, in a positive way. So I don't have time to give you many, but, but just one simple one, which is you can begin to think, say, of your boss, because that's where we started off. Um, if you have a lovely boss, then please forgive me. Um, <coughs> Actually, from this perspective, we all have lovely bosses um, because even if the boss is perceived at initially as, as a difficulty, as a problem, from the perspective of someone who's training the mind, that's perfect because they're not intrinsically a source of anger. Rather, we can regard them as an object for training our mind and patience. We can say, you are my object of patience. You don't say that to them directly. That, that's a bad idea. Um, <laughs> But internally, you say, you are my object of patience. And so then when, they're, when, they, when you see them walking towards you, whereas before it was like inducing stress, now you're thinking, here, here they come, my opportunity for training and patience. And you're ready because you practiced. You've been practicing at home in meditation. You've been preparing your mind to let go of the, you know, the, the, the angry mind that wants to fixate on the problem, to let go of that and instead to say, I'm going to accept the nature of patience, acceptance. Anger is the nature of rejection. Patience is the nature of acceptance. I'm simply, simply going to accept that situation. Within accepting it, then there are many different possibilities of what to do. Within the rejection, everything becomes very limited and very unmanageable. So let me just conclude just by reading one short quote from How to Solve Our Human Problems. Patience is a mind that is able to accept fully and happily whatever occurs. It is much more than just gritting our teeth and putting up with things. Being patient means welcoming wholeheartedly whatever arises having given up the idea that things should be other than what they are. It is always possible to be patient. There is no situation so bad that it cannot be accepted patiently with an open, accommodating, and peaceful heart. I mean, if you think about it, there's never any point in rejecting what's happened. The doors have closed. The boss just asked you to do something. Why reject? It's happened. Just accept. Because then you can deal with it. I mean, sometimes maybe it's appropriate to say no, but not with a mind of anger. You're saying, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that, with a patient mind. Do you see what I'm saying? So patience gives us just all sorts of possibilities, in which case, the seemingly stressful situations become um, just opportunities for training.